Alright, hello everybody and welcome to another video. This is the first of many videos that will explain and try to teach you how to model in the 3D program called 3ds Max. Today we're going to start off with the basics of the basics of modeling polygon modeling, which is the most common technique of modeling within animation, game design, and uh, you, basically just the whole 3D industry. And f first off, I'm not going to explain the entire UI over here because it is a lot. And whenever I watched videos that tried to do that, I just got confused and I didn't remember anything and I had to go into the video time and time again to see what was going on. Now, that's why I'm going to explain only the most important tools, tools that you will use all the time. Which are these tools over here. If you can see my cursor. I advise you to turn up the resolutions to 1080p so you can see my cursor. Maybe be a little hard in the lower resolutions. And the camera tools are over here, down in the, the right corner. And the creation and modify tools are over here. So let's start off with creating a box. First off, select a create panel. It's this kind of star thing. And then select the sphere under that says geometry. Click on the box button and drag yourself a plane. After that release the uh, left mouse button and raise your mouse towards the ceiling. And then click to set the box. This creates a box. Now you might wonder how to rotate the camera. You can either come down here and click on the orbit sub objects button. It's this circular thing which uh, brings up the camera rotate tool. If you just click in the center of the uh, circle and move your mouse around you will see that the camera changes which angle how you perceive the object. And you may wonder why are there four different views here. Well, this one is the perspective view. This perceives the object like your eye does in 3D. And this one is a 2D view from the front. As it says front up here and so are the others but this one is from the top and this one is for the left side. I usually work in the 3D view but to get accurate and uh, in on the details I use the 2D views. So often I'm in full screen mode which if you hold down alt and press W you go into full screen mode of the window that you've selected. As you can see when you select the window, window the color changes to sort of a gold. So, now that we've created a box, you can press F4 to show the wireframe. Now this shows the lines that make out the object. As with a the box, there are four, there's an edge on each corner and for corners total. Easy, right? So if you want to delete the box, you go to the Select Object tool up here. The Modify tools. You select your object, it's probably already selected, and you press Delete on your keyboard. So it goes away. And over where the standard primitives are, where you create stuff, you can create boxes, you can create spheres, you can create cylinder, you can create a, a torus, which is sort of a donut. Anything, even a teapot, that's classic Max. Don't even know why it's in there, but <laughs> it, it gets used more than you'd think. So, when you've first created something, let's say you created a box, and you want to move it around, then you go up to your tools over here, and you click the select and move tool which is this sort of corsair made up of four arrows that brings up this gizmo 
This is called a gizmo for controlling an object. It has all the three axes on them, Z, Y, and X. And it's really easy to move an object. You just click on the axis. It, it will sort of distinguish itself as yellow from the other ones. You click it, and then you just drag. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as that. You can also select the origin of where you want the object in the world through this uh, coordination interface down here. So I'm going to center the object to the world. That means 0, 0, 0. So now it's in Origo. And it's this is how you become really accurate. Most, most of the time when you model, you don't really care about that. Now say you want to... Now you know how to move the box, and you know how to select the box, which is this. If you click outside the box, it gets deselected onto, like that. You can also select with this one, but I advise you not to do it, because this can happen. See, I want to select the box, oh, and I moved it. You can always try to move it back, but you never get the right spot, so always press Ctrl and Z after you've done that, so it goes back to the correct position. Now you know how to move it and select it. Say you want to rotate it. Then you click this uh, tool right here, which says Select and Rotate. It works the same way as the, uh, as the Move tool. You get all the axes you want to rotate on. So if you click uh, one of them and just drag, it'll easily rotate. Now the difference here is that you can click here where there's nothing where there's no axes and rotate it <laughs> it looks really weird but what you're doing is you're rotating around the the camera angle that you're at so if I change the camera angle you'll get a different rotation I, I never used that function but I guess it has a purpose in animation which I don't do very much of I usually model now once you've created a box, maybe you thought it was too small or too big, and then you can go in here and change it. Say you want to have it be 50 centimeters long and uh, 50 centimeters wide and 50 centimeters high. So it becomes a cube. Perfect uh, cube. You can either do that or you can scale it using the scale and uniform select and uniform scale tool. It works also the same way as the move tool. You grab an axis, let's see the z axis, means I scale it larger on the z axis, but only on the z axis. And the y axis, it works the same for all axes. Now, if you click this little outer triangle part, you can select both axes, y and x, and scale on both the axes. Same works for all the axes. If you click in the center, you scale on all the axes at the same time, meaning it's a uniform scale. All the edges get stretched the same amount. So this will always stay a perfect box. So now that we've gotten, gone over the create tools, the select, move, rotate, and scale tools, the camera tools. Now I rotate the camera. You probably wonder how I rotate the camera because I don't click here and then rotate. I use a hotkey. What I do is I hold down Alt and I press my mouse wheel down. And wherever I click on the screen, it doesn't really matter. It starts to rotate the camera. So you just hold down Alt, press your middle mouse button down, and then just move it around. Every time I let go of the mouse it stops to rotate, see? And I click and it rotates. So that's a useful tool. Um, yeah, I think we're going to go into polygon modeling now that we've uh, learned the most of the things. And I advise you to, at least for this first tutorial, maybe I'm going to make more later, but for this first one, I advise you to do exactly as I do.
so I'm going to use as little hotkeys as I possibly can and if I use some I'm going to I'm going to tell you what what hotkeys I use. So we're going to click up here in the corner on the menus and we're going to set reset. This resets all the functions and all the cameras of your 2ds Max to its standard no I do not want to save. 